In this video, I'm gonna show you three programs involved in making wedding invitations. There are so many out there, but these are my favorites for a lot of reasons. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey, I'm a wedding invitation designer and I love to teach people how to design wedding invitations and to run stationary businesses. If you're interested in becoming a stationary designer, definitely join Stationary School. It's our membership by stationers for stationers where you get courses every month and emails every week with tutorials and motivational things to focus on for the week. Now, if you're just gonna make one invitation for your own wedding, you might want to check out Canva or any of the other kind of online free platforms. But if you want to actually make this a career, I'm going to show you the three programs that I use, which are all Adobe programs. Some people have issues with Adobe. You know, I don't agree with every decision that they make, but the big thing is when you are using Adobe programs, everyone else in the industry knows what you're talking about, knows what you're working with. Printers are going to be able to open your files. They're going to be able to tell you what to do when you have an issue and people are going to be able to help you when you get stuck. So that's the main reason that I like to use Adobe programs just because they are the industry standard and everyone else in the industry can help me when I'm using Adobe programs. They might not be able to help me when I'm using other programs. Also, some programs like Canva and some free programs are not uh, suitable for commercial use. That's against their terms of service. Whereas with Adobe, you're going to have full reign over um, the commercial use of anything that you design in these programs. I also love that the programs kind of speak to each other, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so Illustrator is my number one program. It's a vector program. If you want to learn about vector versus raster, I have another video on that that'll help you. Um, but Illustrator and InDesign are both kind of vector based programs. I like to use Illustrator because you can have all these artboards, you can have your invitation, your RSVP card, your envelope, your details card, and you can really just like move these things around and see everything together, which I really like. In InDesign, you can kind of do this, but InDesign is really set up for publications like a yearbook or a magazine or something. So it kind of works in pages. So you'll have multiple different pages. Um, there are ways to kind of work around this, but this is how InDesign is made to work. It's made for layouts and publications, whereas Illustrator is made for working with vector files. So both of them together um, can do a lot of the same things as far as working with text, working with images, working with shapes, etc. Um, but I just like Illustrator's in, uh, interface a little bit better. So test them both out and let me know what you think. I mostly do use InDesign for things that um, are going to be lots of different pages, more so than your regular invitation suite, um, and more simple on the design side. So this is an example of um, some invitations that were printed and I used what's called a mail merge or data merge. I have another video on how to actually do that from a spreadsheet. Uh, but I was able to kind of choose the fonts and placement of everything and then insert the spreadsheet and create this whole uh, 70 page document with all my addresses ready to print. So that's the main reason that I use InDesign and then I use Illustrator for most of the rest of my design. I've got a ton of other tutorials on all of these programs here if you want to check them out. I know I'm going to reference a lot but I just want to give you a little bit of an overview. And then for graphics that are not vector like watercolor we want to generally edit those in Photoshop. So what's cool is you can actually just click on this and click edit in Photoshop and it's going to pull it up for me in Photoshop. So say that I wanted this blue frame to be a different color. Um, I can use an adjustment layer in Photoshop to change the color of that. Let's change it to this green color. And then when I save it, I'm just going to click save and go back into Illustrator. It'll say that some files are missing or modified. So I update them. And now that updates that frame to be the green color. So that's kind of what I mentioned earlier when I said they talk to each other. So if you place something from Photoshop into Illustrator and then you edit in Photoshop, it understands that that's the same file when you go back to Illustrator, which is just really nice and convenient. So I'm not going to be able to edit um, anything about this frame in Illustrator itself because it's a vector graphic, but I can go and edit it in Photoshop because it's a roster graphics editing program. Uh, think of roster as like watercolors, paintings, photographs. Those are kind of the main things that you'll use the roster. And then you can do the actual layout of everything in Illustrator. Photoshop does also have text capabilities. I could, you know, choose this and write their names. Um, and change the font, change the color, etc. It's a little bit clunkier because Photoshop is made to work with roster graphics and text is by nature vector. 
So it's going to be easier to work with things like watercolor and photos in Photoshop, and then easier to work with things like text and uh, shapes, like graphic shapes, for instance, a square or a star um, here in Illustrator because it's a vector editing program. But like I said, it's really cool how these programs just talk to each other and really intermix nicely. If you wanted to use this exact frame over here in InDesign, you could do that just as easily. And then any edits you make in Photoshop will show up in both Illustrator and InDesign. They also share a lot of things. For instance, this is a library that I created called the Stationer Swatchbook that has all of our different um, paper, wax seal colors, etc. from all of our different vendors. And I can access that here in Illustrator. And then I can access that library just as easily right here in Photoshop and I could do the same thing in InDesign. So if you're just looking to make your one invitation for your own wedding, definitely check out some of the free programs that are out there because Adobe can be an investment. But if you do want to take this seriously and make it a career, then you'll find that Adobe is one of the most robust platforms out there and it's just generally the industry standard. So any kind of stationary courses that you might take are generally going to be taught in Adobe. And when you talk to your friends and colleagues about things that are going on, they're going to be able to help you as long as you're using similar programs to them. Plus Adobe is just so robust. Like I don't want it to sound like I'm just using this because everyone else uses it, but it's actually a really wonderful program and they're updating it all the time. So I hope you'll check out some of the other videos on our Adobe playlist to see some of the features that you might find useful for invitation design. If you're interested in pursuing this as a career, definitely check out Stationary School, which is linked in the description of this video. Thanks.